Margaret, I met a friend. G come in, do. Come in. Oh, Mr. Higgins. Margaret. How are you? Last week I could do no else but bar the door. I understand. It was me that made him do it. No, Mr. Higgins, you are not to blame. I could have set Boucher on a better road, so I must answer for it. Sit down, Mr. Higgins. We, we have all of us left undone those things we ought to have done. We, we confess that daily. God, in his mercy, forgives us. But I called him a Judas, a coward. He was a brave man. I want you to help me. To help you, of course. When I go down south, I want to take Mrs. Boucher with me and the children. Work for them, care for them. Leave here and go south. There's no work for me here. I'm blacklisted. For many a time, Margaret, I've heard you talk of the south. Perhaps you know somebody who might give me work. What sort of work could you do? I reckon I could spade a bit. But you would not bear the dullness of the life. Have you been to Marlborough Mills for work? Yes, have you been to see Mr Thornton? Not Thornton himself, but I've been to the works. I saw the overlooker. <laughs> He bid me go and be damned. I wish you had seen Mr. Thornton. Please try to see him. Oh, such a man as me is not likely to see the master. I'll write you a note. A note that you can give to him. I think I may venture to say it will ensure your hearing. What do you say? You need not write your note. I'll not have favour cut it for me. But I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do it for your sake, Margaret. It taxes me pride above a bit. But I'll do it for you. With you, sir. Hey? Word in private if you'd be so kind, sir. No? Ah, oh, perhaps we could step outside, Master. Oh, no. Wait here, will you? You know who that is? You tell me. That's Higgins, one of the leaders of the union. He's been hanging around for hours. Higgins? Ah, desperate character. Why, well, there's some even say he's a socialist. Socialist? Thank you, Williams. We can get on with him for a minute or two. How's that? What do you want with me? My name's Higgins. Yes, I know that. What do you want, Mr. Higgins? That's a question. I want work, so will you lay me on? You're a fine chap. Come on, asking me for work. They don't like impudence, that's very clear. What are you waiting for? I asked you a question. Yes. I'm waiting for the answer. I'll give it to you, so don't waste any more of your time. All you've done is make a remark on my impudence. I was taught it with manners to say yes or no when I asked a simple question. I'll repeat it. I'll be thankful to you if you give me work. Look, Higgins, I've turned off a hundred of my best hands for following you and the likes of you. Do you think that set you on? Might as well throw a firebrand at a bit like cotton waste. I'd make you promises. What promises? I promise you, Master, I'd not speak a word as could do you harm, if so be you do right by us working men. Well, and what's done. more, I'd promise if I see you going wrong, acting unfair, I'd speak to you in private first, and that would be fair warning. Oh, my word, you don't think small beer of yourself, do you? You're not giving me work. I'm sorry to have troubled you. I wouldn't have come on our coke stone by a woman. Well, tell her to mind her own business in future. Go on, get out. I'm obliged to you for your kindness, Master. But most of all, for your civil way of saying goodbye. Good day. You certainly sent him off with his tail between his legs. What's he after, sir? They're after work. Work? What do you say? Aye. Speak of the man. Mind you, they do say it's not the revolutionary it was. Not since he calls that fellow's death. Who's death? 
Moulter. Found himself. That Iggins has it on his conscience. And so he should have. Tried to make up for it by looking after both his wife and children. Children? Six of them. Starving to death, tragic, I know, but I looks at it this way, sir. The Bible says, the sins of the father shall be visited on the children. Mayhap it's the Lord's way of weeding out the riffraff. You told him I sent you. I didn't call you by name. I told me a woman had advised me to come. And he? Oh, he told me to tell you to mind your own business. But never mind. Them were civil words to what he used to me. You, call in here. You best come in. Miss Hale. Good evening, Mr. Thornton. I apologise. I didn't know you had company. I, I was on the point of leaving. But you only just come. Well, my main intention was to call on Mrs. Boucher to see if I can be of help to her. Aye, poor woman. Don't let me keep you then. Miss Hale, I had no knowledge that you were here. I didn't know you were a friend of Mr. Higgins. This was a woman you said was to mind her own business. It was you. I apologise for my hasty words. Mr. Higgins, I wonder if I might ask you a great favour. Favour? Apologise? You're learning manners at last, have you? Never having been in your house before, you may think this a great impertinence. But I'd be pleased and deeply grateful if you'd be kind enough to allow Miss Hale and me to have a few words together. Alone. Good like that. And you're a guest. All in gear's time and a bit of rented space, so that you're welcome, Mr. Thornton. I'll wait in the yard till you're finished. You... You had a visit from my mother, I understand. I did. I regret what took place. I would not have you hunted and badgered. Miss I'll have you no explanation. You must know what I can but think. I am aware of what I must appear to you. But I'm not in a position to explain. If I did, I would bring harm to another person. Then I'll ask no further. I thought we might have had something to say to each other, but I see that we mean nothing to one another. I hope you're quite convinced that any foolish passion on my part is entirely over. And if you will excuse me. Good evening, Mr. Thornton. Miss Hale. Oh, Mr. Thornton, what is it you want? Eh? Will you take work with me? That's all I've come to ask. Work for you after today. What's the catch? No catch. I didn't know about the children. Not just children? Aye. What are they to you? They're children, that's all. Mr. Thornton, I think we should first have a chat, you and me, about the fundamental principles involved in hiring a labour. I'm not here to discuss the rights of man with you. Will you take the job? Because about his children? Aye. Well? All right. I'll come. And what's more, I'll thank you. And that's a deal from me. That's a deal from me. A bargain. Bargain. Well, it's all done, Papa. Dixon and I have packed the big trunk for you. Thank you, my dear. Mr. Thornton has written once more to say that he must forego his lesson. This is the third time. You must be disappointed. Now he must go to France on business. I'd, I'd hoped particularly to see him before I left for Oxford. Margaret, have you ever had cause to think that Mr. Thornton cared for you? Yes. Oh, Papa, I should have told you. Yeah, I'm sure you would have if you had returned his regard. Uh, did he speak to you of it? Yes. And you refused him? Yes. 
forgive me for not telling you more. But the whole thing is so painful to me that I cannot bear to think of it. I understand, my dear. I'm so sorry to have lost your friend. I, I, I could not help it. But... Oh, I'm so, so sorry. Margaret, I'm, I'm sorry too. <laughs> But, my dear, if it distresses you so much, why don't you come to Oxford with me? No. Your godfather would be delighted to see you. Oh, you're both very kind. Oh, after all that has happened these last few months, I shall enjoy the peace and quiet of remaining here with Dixon. You will take care of yourself. You promise me. Yes, Papa, I will. I should be sorry to leave you, Margaret. It will seem strange without you. But you know how happy you will be to be in Oxford again after all this time. <laughs> yes, indeed. It's, it is a long time. I, I, I must confess, Margaret, I, yeah, I feel a little nervous. Oh, you will feel differently tomorrow, once you've arrived. on this train? Ah, caught it in London. As a matter of fact, I'm just on my way back from France. I've been doing some business there. Uh, successfully, I hope. Well, yes. It's got me out of trouble for the time being. What about you? Tell me on your way to Milton. Yes. Yes, I am. Got to put up my rent, I hope. I warn you, we got to the stage of diminishing returns. Oh, come now, Thornton. You've never found me an unreasonable landlord, have you? Well, not so far as landlords go, no. But what is the purpose of your visit, may I ask? The most melancholy errand, I'm afraid. Oh. You know Mr. Hale's been staying with me for the last few weeks? Yes. Well, prepare yourself for a shock, Thornton. Mr. Hale is no more. He passed away last night. What? He went to bed last night, to all appearances, in good health and excellent spirits when my servant called him this morning. He had gone. He hadn't seen Oxford for 17 years. His visit was a joyful reconciliation with his past, with his whole life. He was happier than I've ever known him. If a man must die, his was a good death. We can thank God for that. Does... does Miss Hale know? Margaret? No. I'm on my way to break the news to her. Now well, she's alone. Come on, well, it's obvious she won't stay in Milton. I think it most likely she'll go to London and live with her aunt, Mrs. Shaw. Uh, London, yes, I see. Margaret, my dear. Yes, Godfather. I know this has all been a terrible shock to you, my child, but I have things that I ought to discuss with you. Can you bear to listen to me? Yes, of course. Ah, good, good. Now, I've written to your aunt, and she should be arriving tomorrow. Yes. Now, I think it most likely she'll want to return with you to London as soon as possible. You will be happy in London, won't you? Yes. Good. Now then, as I have only really one more day here, I was wondering, as your aunt probably won't uh, leave you enough time to say goodbye to your friends, if you have the courage, my dear, I could accompany you on your leave-taking. Leave-taking? Well, you may never see this place again. I know. Well now, who are the friends that you would wish to visit? We have made so few friends, friends who would remark on my departure. But there's Mr. Higgins. I must say goodbye to Mr. Higgins. Yes, yes, and uh, who else? I cannot 
think. There's uh, Mr. Thornton. Have you forgotten him? No, I have not forgotten him. Then you'll say goodbye to him. Yes. I will say goodbye. Saddle the lamb? What? Get a working man, saddle the lamb? Why not? Not enough packing in it. Packing? No fat, nothing succulent. If you're opening the dining room for your workers, you want to gain what they're used to, and lots on it. Ah, well, what do you recommend then, Higgins? Here, take this number pencil, do a bit of jotting. Right, far ahead. Right, yeah. First off, hot pot. Next, belly draft. Necklam and pearl barley. Chall trotters, chitlins in the jissop. Jissop? Ah, oh, chitlins in the jissop. First rate fettle, I tell you. Got cow wheel down, have you? Um, oh, it's nice and gluey around your chops as your cow wheel. And don't forget your giblet pie. <laughs> all right, Higgins, all right. You've convinced me. Well, what are you up to, Thornton? You taking up cooking? <laughs> Mr. Bell. <laughs> it's uh, a scheme Higgins and I are devising. We're opening a canteen. Buying the food wholesale, see? It's cheaper. And every man in the mill will get one good meal a day and at rock bottom price. Mm, most progressive, my good man. Most progressive. All right, Higgins, we'll, we'll complete this tomorrow. Very good, sir. Hmm. Ah, it's very good of you to call. Well, uh, actually, I brought Miss Hale with me. She's in the house saying goodbye to your mother. I want to apologize for my manner the last time you met Mrs. Thornton. I'm sure you meant kindly, however much we may have misunderstood each other. I did no more than what I believed to be my duty. I'm glad you do me justice. What part of London shall you be residing in, Miss Hale? Harley Street. Oh. oh. Walter and I have discussed the possibility of acquiring a townhouse uh, after we are married. I, I fancy Cheney Walk myself. If you do come to town, Miss Thornton, I shall do all in my power to give you every attention. Oh. And you too, Mrs. Thornton. I never go to London. Uh, oh. Thank you, thank you. Uh. Good day, Mr. Thornton. Good day, Miss Hale. I'm very sorry to hear of your sad loss. Your father was a dear friend to me. I have been sorting through Papa's books, and I wondered if you would like his copy of Homer. Oh, I shall value that greatly. Thank you. John, I'm sorry to say that Miss Hale's call is to wish us goodbye. Mr. Bell told me. You're leaving then, for London. Yes, my aunt arrives tomorrow to fetch me. And we shall never see you again. I doubt it. Goodbye then, Miss Hale. Goodbye, Mr. Thornton. Yes, we ought to be making a move. Goodbye, Miss Thornton. Yeah. Goodbye, Miss Hale. I'll come down with you, Miss Hale. Child, I had simply no conception how you were living. Butler's wife lives in a better house than this. How you have suffered, poor lamb. It can be very pretty around here in summer. Your taste is blunted, girl. Still, we shall soon bring you back to what you were born to be, a lady of refinement. Dixon? Yes, madam. I have decided that you will remain here. Can I trust you to sort through what belongings there are ready for the auctioneer to put under his hammer? I think you can safely leave that to me, madam. Thank you, Dixon. You may go. Thank you, madam. We are selling all our furniture, then. You can hardly have these odds and ends with us in London. Not the right style at all. No, I suppose not. In fact, I am thinking about refurnishing the house, having everything Gothic, Mr. Pugin style. Uh, have you seen any? No, Aunt. Oh, he had an absolutely wonderful display at the 51 exhibition. His medieval room is still talked about. A most talented man is Mr. Pugin. You'll have to meet him. Thank you. You're going to live again, Margaret. There is a wonderful life in store for you. Excuse me, madam. Miss Margaret, Mr. Higgins would like to see you. Please show him in, Dixon. Well, show him in. 
If you'd step this way, Mr. Higgins. Oh, Mr. Higgins, how good of you to come. Oh, this is my aunt, Mrs. Shaw. How do you do? I will go upstairs and lie down, Margaret, dear. Dixon, you will remain. Yes, madam. So, you're going to be a grand lady up in London, Mr. Thornton told me. Oh, not a grand lady. I should have come to see you before I left. Bless you. I knowed you'd come if you could. As I said to Master, if I don't see her for a gauze, I shall get up to London next Whitsuntide. I'll not be bold to say any goodbye. No one else remembers me in Milton. I can be certain of you. You made your mark. I'll not forget you, not ever. Thank you. And I shall always treasure our friendship. We've been great friends. Bless you, Margaret. Bless you. And amen. Margaret, if only I could find somebody for you to marry. I shall never marry. Oh, Nonsense. I want to see you happy again. <laughs> Don't grieve too long. After all, it is more than six months since your father died. It's high time you started to think of yourself. Edith, I beg You've you... You've become don't... such an attraction to the house during the past few months. <laughs> Sholto knows many men who wish to visit here only for your sake. Do you know, Edith, I sometimes think that your stay abroad with the regiment has taught you... Well, just a shade or two of coarseness. Come, my dears, I can't have you two gossiping together all evening. Come, Margaret. Well, my dear, how are you enjoying your return to society? I find society a little difficult to accept. I don't feel part of it anymore. Margaret, a girl must not say such a thing. Such an admission is on the scene. What you need, Margaret, my dear, is gentleness and tenderness. I will leave you with Henry, for he has a rich fund of both. You will look after her, won't you? While I tour the guests. <laughs> Margaret. Yes, Henry? Tear away the pretentious veneer of our conversation and you would find that this room is full of aching hearts. Why do you go on with it? If I speak for myself, my, my own somewhat forced, affable chatter is simply a means of disguising how vulnerable I am. You vulnerable? Are it all men who have a longing for something? For someone are vulnerable. Henry, you are the kindest and most sympathetic friend I have here. Still only a friend. And I remain vulnerable. And being so, I must make sure that society is unaware of it. So come, Margaret, what chit-chat shall we engage in? I do not enjoy chit-chat. But you must, Margaret, you must. It is an essential rule of the game. I hear that the thing to avoid this season is to attend any party where Alfred Lord Tennyson is invited. Got a new poem called Maud. Reads it in a special sing-song voice with tears dripping down his face. Nothing but moans and groans. An absolute shocker of a man. Guaranteed to kill any evening stone dead. Right, sad it am to see it like this, Miss Dixon. It was a tragic house, Mr. Riggins. Tragic from first to last. Aye? No, Mr. Riggins. Miss Ayer wrote to me most insistently that you should come in and pick something that you like before it's all sent to the auction tomorrow. How is she now? Well, she doesn't say much in her letters, but I'd say London was suiting her. Well, it's her kind of life, see, what she was born and bred for. Well, now. I've laid off the ottomans over there. And if there's anything you fancy, just you take it. Right, yeah. I'll have this. Old Ale's tobacco, yeah. I'll think of him every time I dips in my pipe. Just a minute. That isn't Mr. Ailes. I shouldn't have left it there. It was Master Frederick's. Who's Frederick? He is nobody that you know. There is a Frederick, then. What? Now, wait a minute. 
You had Aunt Mary working in the kitchen when Mrs. Hale was dying. Oh, they said a nice looking fellow come to the house. They said it was Miss Hale's brother. How many other people has your Mary talked? Oh, only me. I poo pooed the idea until now because I thought it was one of her fancies. But it is right, isn't it? Miss Hale does have a brother, a brother named Frederick. Mr. Higgins, so this goes no further, it is best to tell you something. Uh -huh. Something the family's tried to wash up. If it got out that he'd come to his house, Miss Margaret could be put in prison for harboring a desperate criminal. Miss Hale's brother a criminal? Well, we don't think so, and nobody in their right minds would think so. But the law thinks so. If it were left to the law, he'd be dangling from the yard arm. What, what did he do, then? He led a mutiny in one of her Majesty's ships. Mutiny? He had a good reason for it. The captain were a tyrant. Master Frederick led that mutiny to save more death and suffering. Where is he now? In Spain. He married a Spanish girl and settled down there. Is that Jonnock? Jonnock? True. Not a word of a lie. Well, it's a... I hope A right flummox, sir. Still... <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, there ain't no Frederick, no never was. That settled them. Now, Mr. Higgins, is there something else that you fancy? Can I have this? Oh, that's Mr. Hale's prayer book. I know. I thought you were against religion. I am a bit. It's nice to have somebody to handle, something Mr. Hale put his mind to. You take it, Mr. Higgins. Arm six. Ta. Upon my soul, Margaret, it's easier to lay hands on the crown jewels than to get inside this place. Oh. <laughs> oh, how good it is to see you, Godfather. Well, how are they treating you, my dear child? Well, I hope... Oh, yes, most but, kind. Well, uh, where is your aunt, then, and your cousins? The place seems deserted. They've gone out visiting. What? Left you all alone? No, I asked them to. I cannot stand the whirl of the social round day in, day out. Hmm. But what brings you here? Well, now, I've just come down from Milton. Milton? Yes, and I thought I'd better come straight here and give you my report. You went there especially for the auction? Yes, and to see that the house was taken off your hands. Now, fortunately, Thornton has found a tenant, so that worry's over. You have seen Mr Thornton? Yes, and oh, great news in that family, great news. A marriage. A ma Miss Fanny has married Walter Slickson, son of Slickson, the manufacturer. Smart young fellow. Uh, perhaps a little too shrewd for his years. Fly, that's what I call him, Fly. He talks all of um, uh, markets and exchanges and goodness knows oh, what. But I uh, hope she will be happy with him. Yes, indeed. Well, Margaret, do you know what I did on the train? I fell asleep, fast asleep. And I had a dream. You'll never guess what I dreamt about. I dreamt I was back in that dear little village called Helston. And uh, when I woke up, I had a notion, just an idea. Uh -huh. I'd like us, just you and I, to go and visit it. Visit Helston? If it wouldn't pain you too much, my child. Oh, no. My memories of it are happy memories. Oh, Godfather, what a sweet, generous soul you are. Oh, nonsense, nonsense. <laughs> Ah, uh, thank you, thank you. There we are. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, sir. Right. Well, now, I wonder where everybody is. That's. Uh... Oh. Oh. Ah. <laughs> the... Well, bless my soul. It's Miss Ayla, isn't it? Mr. Hale. Good afternoon, Mrs. Perkins. Oh. Well, Mrs. Perkins, I'm afraid we haven't given you any warning, but I do hope you've got some rooms. Mr. Bell, of all people, Mr. Bell. You remember me? Remember you. By many's the time you stayed under this roof in the old days. Mm. You're most welcome, sir. Of course, we got rooms. Ah, good, good. So fancy seeing you again, Miss Hale. And how's the vicar, your father? God bless him. We've never ceased to be sorry he left. Papa... He's gone from us, Mrs. Perkins. Oh, no, never so. See, uh, Margaret is my goddaughter, and her father was my oldest friend. 
So we thought we'd come down here together and have a look at the old place. It has changed, changed a lot. Indeed. Oh, uh, in two or three years, it has changed beyond recognition. Mm -hmm. Well, we must investigate that for ourselves, mustn't we? Now, Mrs. Perkins, would you be kind enough to show us to our rooms? Right you are. Uh, oh, can you manage those? What, these bags? Mm. They're feathers. Feathers? Oh. Godfather, whatever <laughs> Mrs. Perkins says, people do not change. Ordinary people. You don't think so? Well, we shall see. Come on. Yes, we shall see. Let us call on some of the old cottages, and then visit the school, and then, if I'm brave enough to bear it, go to the vicarage once more. Anything you say, my dear. I like to think we're the vanguard of the new Church of England, Miss Hale. We can no longer afford the indulgence of meditation and all that. Oh, careful, William. Miss Hale's father was a scholar. This room, I believe, was once full of his books. Well, there were books in every room. But this was our drawing room, too. Well, the good old church is changing. We must change with it. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. There are no roses. They've gone. Uh, the children, Miss Hale. <coughs> we needed room for them to play. Strict discipline. That's what I believe in. A bit of the Roman attitude. Leave abstruse dogma to the wise old fathers of the church while we get on with the job. Too much delving by mediocre minds can only lead to heresy. Are you referring to my father? He became a dissenter and left the church. Sorry, nothing personal. It's just that I've had to tackle a parish that's got a bit vague about things. I didn't quite follow. I mean, they haven't got it clear yet on original sin, let alone their muddled thinking about transubstantiation. Well, my attitude is absolutely clear, isn't it, my dear? Oh, yes, William. Too much thinking for yourself cultivates pride. It's your mind against the will of God. And that can lead to all kinds of trouble. I think Miss Hale knows that. Yes, all respect to your father, but if he had relied upon faith and the symbols of faith... Uh, the first thing William did was open a chapel to Our Lady. Yes, uh. it's that kind of thing that keeps your mind on the right courses. To be a faithful Christian, there's a good case for sacrificing the intellect, you know. In all humility, may I suggest that that is what your father never did. Sacrifice his intellect? Precisely. No. Papa never did that. <clears throat> Everything all right, sir? Oh, yes, indeed. Thank you, Mrs. Thank Perkis. You. Thank you. Now, my dear, you have a little port? No, thank you. No? Is anything the matter, my dear? I looked on Helston as paradise. Everything's altered. Perhaps it's you. Me? Yes, possibly. You see, living in the smoky, bustling north, you probably began to take a romantic view of life down here. Yes. And now I must guard against the reverse. Oh? Taking a romantic view of the north. Of the people? <laughs> There's nothing romantic about them. Oh, no, uh, poor Mr. Thornton's having rather a difficult time. There are rumours he may have to close the mill. Oh, no, I hope not. Well, trade is very bad. Please let me tell you something. You could perhaps help me a little. Yes, go on, my dear. There is something which has caused a barrier between me and Mr. Thornton. Oh? It's a long story. But you know at the time of Mama's death, my brother returned to this country. No, I did not know. Oh, I thought Papa would have told you. Well, I had to hurry Frederick away again quickly out of the country, secretly. I went with him to the railway station. It was very late. Midnight. Mr. Thornton saw us waiting for the train, embracing. Well, and you've never explained to him? Oh, could I? The fewer people who knew about Frederick, the better. Yeah. Now I'm not likely to see Mr. Thornton ever again. Oh, I wouldn't say that. But I believe I never shall. Somehow one does not like to sink so low in a friend's opinion. 
Would you like me to see Mr. Thornton for you and explain discreetly, of course, the whole matter to him? Would you? Mm. Would you? Please tell him all the circumstances. Tell him also that I gave you leave to do so. Well, for Papa's sake, I should not like to lose Mr. Thornton's respect. Though we may never meet again. My dear, I shall take the first opportunity of going to Milton to see him. Baba, why are you not in bed? I heard you walking about down here. Well, is it the end? I fear so. Can you ask Mr. Bell to forego the rent for a while? He might even lend you what you need to tide you over. No, I did not tell you, Mother. Mr. Bell's very ill. Ill? I had a letter from his servant. He was too ill to write himself. Well, why don't you go before it's too late? For what reason? To get money from a dying man, I'd find that despicable. In any case, I wouldn't be indebted to the person who is likely to inherit his fortune. Who's that? His goddaughter. Oh, Miss Hale? And nobody else to leave it to. You mean Sheila owned this house? And the factory? <laughs> and all his other properties in Milton. No. I shall have to give up business. I can just cover all the debts, pay off the men. We shall have very little left. You mustn't grieve, Mother, about leaving the house. I don't care about the house. It's you I care about. Breaks my heart to see you less than you should be. Is there nothing you can do? No. It's not fair, Mother. Can't start again with the same heart. Sometimes I wonder where justice has gone to. Now I don't believe there is any. God has seen fit to be very hard on you, John. Did he leave a will? When I last saw Mr. Bell, he hinted to me the terms of it. Unless he has added a codicil, which is unlikely, the whole of his estate passes to Margaret. Which is... Uh, what, exactly? Well, besides any money, she will have the whole of his Milton properties. They amount to some £40,000. Mr. Bell died well. Margaret will be heartbroken. She was so fond of him, Mama. Oh, yes. The death of a dear one is always hard to bear. Henry. Mrs. Shaw. You must break this news to her yourself. Oh, yes, I intend to. But I feel that if you and Edith were there too, the comfort of women folk oh, would... No, 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 Henry, I do not agree. There is much to be gained by her having the sole comfort of a man. As her lawyer, you must stay by her. Give her all the help and sympathy she needs. Margaret, my dear, Henry has just told us he has some very serious news for you. Oh? Edith, we will allow them some privacy. Yes, Mama, of course. Dixon? Yes, madam. Dearest Margaret. Yes. I have some deeply sad news to tell you. Mr. Bell has departed this life. Mr. Bell? Oh, no. His solicitors felt that I should be the one to tell you. They have also suggested that when, in a day or two, the will Where? is read that you... Where did he die? In Oxford. Oxford? Not... Milton. Goodbye, Jenkins. Thank you. Goodbye, Master. And if you ever start up the factory again, then you can count on me, because I'm the only one who knows how to work that new carding machine proper. Ah, hi, thank you. Goodbye, Roberts. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye, Pinfold. Thank you, Master, for getting me placed with Mr. Amper. I wish I could have done it for all of you. Still, if there's anything I can do at any time... Well, do you know that, Master? We know it. Goodbye. 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 
the lock, Master. Ah, right, don't bother locking up, Williams. I'll see to it. Well, what are you going to do? Brother hit me. Get me work down pit, Durham Way. Pits? Aye. Wife's dead, why not? Well, take care of yourself, Williams. Ah. Bye, Master. Lord be with you. Thank you. Goodbye, Williams. Well. Very quiet, Mother. You're a brave man, John, to say goodbye to your workers. I like things to be tidy, Mother. Round it off. I'll join you in the house. You leave me alone to lock up. Call me master. I'm nobody's master now. I want to tell you that if you want to start up again, in a small way, in the backyard, I'll work for you for nothing. Nothing? No, I don't even got your feet off the ground. Higgins, where are your union principles now? No more battle left betwixt you and me. Aye. We're two men out of a job. I'm sorry I couldn't get you alternative employment, but because of your union association. Don't you worry about that. Time will come when I'll have to accept us. You uh, won't be offended if I speak to you man to man. No, please do. We've been thrust together, haven't we? First the strike, then getting mixed up the hails. How is Miss Margaret? Have you heard? Miss Hale? Aye, all alone in London, isn't she? Not even a brother to look after her. Brother? Aye. Well, she's got a brother, didn't you? Come over here at the time of her mother's death, lives in Spain. In Spain? Uh, don't suppose he'll ever be back. I mean, leading a moot near one of Her Majesty's ships. No forgiveness for that, is there? No, no. Oh. Better be toddling, then. Hey. Oh, aye. Good day, then. Thornton. Good day, Higgins. Brother. Mr. Thornton. Yes, Miss Margaret. Um, he wishes to speak with you. Mr. Thornton? Thornton of Milton? I believe so, madam. His speech is certainly not of London. Uh, if you'll pardon my saying so, Miss Margaret. You will not see him, Margaret. Not see him? I consider it more prudent. You have inherited a considerable fortune. Henry has told me about this, Mr. Thornton. He is a man in sharply reduced circumstance. With respect, Mrs. Shaw, I do feel that some allowances should be made. After all, generosity of spirit, if of nothing else, can be shown to those who have fallen from their pinnacles. Henry, he is not a member of one of your London clubs. He is a northerner. Newton, yes. show Mr. Thornton into the library. Uh, yes, Miss Margaret. Margaret, my dear, do you realize what you have just done? You have countermanded my order in front of a servant. In what way? I have forbidden you to see Mr. Thornton. It is for your own good. There will be many who come after your money. You must be protected. I am now of age. You cannot command me. And I shall do with my own as I wish. Don't be foolish, Margaret. Would you do me the kindness to let me speak to Mr. Thornton? I think you must let Margaret speak with him. As you think best, Henry. Mr. Thornton. Thank you, Newton. Mr. Thornton. Miss Hale. What brings you to London? A delicate action and a deep apology. That night at the railway station, the man I saw you with was your brother. Was he not? How did you know? I was told so by Mr. Higgins. Oh, I see. He didn't greatly enlarge upon it. 
a matter for some discretion. But I truly believe it was your brother. Forgive me. Of course. You have had to close Marlborough Mills. Yes. I'm sorry I should be losing you as a tenant. Ah, thank you. Mr. Thornton, I, I, I believe I have a little over 18,000 pounds lying unused in my bank. It was only yesterday I was discussing it with Henry Lennox. It brings in a mere two and a half percent. If, if you would take this money, you could pay me much better interest and go on working more than Mills. You, you could make it into one of the finest industries in the whole of England. You once told me that was your aim. Given my capital, could it not be your aim once more? Margaret. Margaret. Why do you not speak? If I must go, then send me away at once. Margaret. I love you. I've always loved you. I, look, I, I have something to show you. Do you know these roses? No. You might have once worn sister roses. They're from Helston. At a time when I had no hope of calling you mine. I went there on my return from France. I wanted to see the place where Margaret Hale grew to be what she is. You must give them to me. Yeah, very well. But you must pay me for them first. Margaret, you must leave all of this. London, the South. Aye. Oh. It is not places that matter. <laughs> 